this Keep or Trash video, we're going to be looking at Burdum Audio's Vocal Compressor. If you're new to the Keep or Trash series, it's where we look at free plugins and then determine if it's actually something we want to keep in our plugin library, or if it's not something we're going to use enough and therefore we're going to trash it. So the, I, I kind of just stumbled across this one and I instantly was like, yeah, we need to do a Keep or Trash on this one because for a lot of people including me, this is going to be a keep, but I will definitely explain why. At the end of the video, we'll also look at the air shelf, and I'll do a very just quick keeper trash on that. But this is really about the vocal compressor, and it is very similar to Arvox. One knob, you pull that down, it does its program-dependent compression, and it's very much optimized for narration and for sung vocals. There's a little bit of a look ahead on it. And then this one also has a little high-frequency sensitivity, which can kind of do a little bit of DSing. I think it's around like 10K, 15K region. And to download this thing, it is pretty easy. You have to type in an email address. You'll put in $0. And after you do that, you can download it. Um, of course, if you're going to use it all the time, probably worth paying a little bit of money to the developer for it because, you know, they didn't make this for free. And I know if I use it a lot, I probably will throw some money their way. Um, and I think, you know, just as a little bit of a spoiler, this is a keep for pretty much anyone that does do any kind of vocal production that doesn't already have Arvox. If you're in the industry, you need Arvox because everybody is using it. And so you want to make sure that you can load up the sessions correctly. But if you're like me now and you're not really working with vocalists, you're not in the industry at all, um, something like this is just a great alternative to have that basically is going to do the same thing. And, you know, Arvox has been used on everything over the years. So let me go ahead and let's just bring it on here. And this is just a little narration of me. So this is going to be one of these weird like, you know, matrix sort of things. Quick audio recording example of how you would use the vocal compressor. Quick audio recording example of how And all you do is you just pull down the compress the knob or you can have them go together because it is going to bring the audio up. Podcast or for some kind of a video that you are making and uploading to the internet. Quick audio recording example of how you would use the vocal compressor on a narration or a podcast or for some kind of a video that you are making and uploading to the internet. Quick audio recording example of how you would use the vocal compressor. So I just want to bring that down so we're kind of peeking out around 6 dB. Now the high frequency sensitivity, let's see if we can find a spot that might trigger that on a narration. or So maybe that narration part, it will work well. On a narration. And let's watch to see how much compression is being on applied. On a narration. Or and now it's put up to 100%. On a narration or a podcast or on a narration or a, on a narration. Or so you can see that it's grabbing that a little bit more. It's not super audible. So it's really going to depend on the source material that you're feeding into it. It's not going to replace a DSer, but it can help a DSer not have to work maybe as hard. So if we bring like a spectrum analyzer on, let's see if we can actually kind of see what's happening here with that high frequency sensitivity on a narration or okay. on a narration or on a narration so this still might be too low because like on a narration it's really peaking out more like at 3.4 k as compared to up in this range but let's just turn it all the way up and just see if that peak maybe looks a little bit less extreme on a narration or a, on a narration or a pot on a narration or a pot on a narration or a... So I do think it's doing something even to that range a little bit. We might have a better example coming up. And then just for a very quick compare and contrast, my normal go-to for narration stuff is the Pro C2. I just go into, I believe, vocals and Pro voiceover is my go-to on a narration or a podcast. And then I'm just going to get us about 7 dB. Of how you would use the vocal compressor on a narration or a podcast or for some kind of a video that you are making and uploading to the internet.
quick audio recording example of how you would use the vocal compressor on a narration or a podcast or for some kind of a video that you are making and uploading to the internet. Quick audio recording example. So yeah, somewhere like that is probably where I would just set it up. Quick audio recording example of how you would use the Quick audio recording example of louder, how you but... would use the vocal compressor on a narration or a podcast or for some kind of a video that you are making and uploading to the internet. So yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, that's that's the bottom line is it works really, really well. It does what you expect it to do. It reacts very similar to Arvox. And so for a quick starting point on a vocal, it's always useful to a lot of times bring that on. And then you might throw on another compressor that's just doing like 1 dB or something of gain. Um, but yeah, that's it's it's again, it's an amazing little tool. Let's go ahead and move on to this one. We'll make mistakes, we'll take them all. And this is where the high frequency sensitivity is going to be a little bit more useful. And that's the reason why I brought it on to this one. It's already been compressed, I can tell, but we'll go further with it. We'll make mistakes, we'll take them on till the dawn rise, then it's over. We'll make mistakes, we'll take them on till the dawn rise, then it's over. We'll make mistakes, we'll take them on Till the dawn rise, then it's over We'll make mistakes, we'll take them on We'll make mistakes, we'll take them on You can hear it. We'll make mistakes, we'll take... But I actually would say in this case, I'd probably dial that back until it wasn't so audibly pulling those higher frequencies down and then i would add another kind of like probably the pro ds on this as well uh, see if we could really kind of tame it out without it being too too obvious um, but yeah that's an example of it on a source like that and then finally we'll throw it on to this one where um, this one you can see that in the second half it is kind of quieter than the first half I mean, I don't and I'm going to be really aggressive. And you can hear, even going that extreme with it, it works pretty well. And I'm just going to go ahead and bounce it so we can see what it's done to the audio in this case. Yeah, you can see how we've aggressively leveled it out, and yet it still doesn't sound that bad. Um, so if you, have, for some reason, desperately had to jump this to the front, you could overcompress it, and it would probably still work and be doable. Um, so that is a look at vocal compressor. It is a keep if you don't already have Arvox, and if you are just doing any kind of work with vocals, narration or sung vocals. And you can even try it on leads. Like you can try it on a lead guitar. You can try it on a lead synthesizer and just do like a little bit and see if it brings it forward. I'm not saying it's going to work every time or like if you're compressing a reverb, like something like this can also be useful to where you can bring the tail down a little bit, like a reverb on a vocal. Like, I don't know. Let's go ahead and uh, try to actually do that really quickly. Uh, I'm going to have to cut ahead so that you don't have to watch me set it up, but I do want to show this off real quick. Okay, so I've set up the pure plate here, and I'm just going to throw the vocal compressor on after this. And we are just compressing the reverb. And actually, I can use that trim to then dial it in. We'll make mistakes, we'll take them on Till the dawn rise, then it's over We'll make mistakes, we'll take them on Till the dawn rise, then it's over We'll make mistakes, we'll take And actually I shouldn't trim it this way because we won't be able to do a very good uh, comparison when we turn it on or off. We'll take them on Till the dawn rise, then it's over. 
Don't make mistakes, won't take them on Till the dawn rise, then it's over So yeah, the gain don't mismatch mistakes, is so extreme, take but take them on Till the dawn rise, then it's over A lot of times what it's going to allow you to do is bring your decay time way, way, way down Still get the reverb effect, but then not have like a cluttered tail Won't take them Ooh. on Till the dawn rise, then it's over. Don't make mistakes, won't take them on. Till the dawn rise, then it's over. Don't make mistakes, won't take them on. Till the dawn rise, then it's over. Don't make mistakes, won't take them on. Till the dawn rise, then it's over. So yeah, a little trick there for another way you could use the vocal compressor on something to do something very practical. Um, and it's easy. So like, you know, again, we love to sort of like compress reverbs, but it's it's not an easy like setting to dial in typically, at least for me. So having something like this, that's just no thought process, and you know, it's going to do what you want it to do is amazing. Um, so the other thing that I did want to just very quickly look at is the air shelf. And I'm going to just throw it on to this same vocal here. Don't take them on till the dawn rise, then it's over. Don't make mistakes, won't take them on till the dawn rise, then it's over. So you can hear that. Don't make mistakes. And you can hear it's still getting a little tss, tss, So we'll see if the tame can help that. Don't take them on till the dawn rise, then it's over. Okay, that did Don't help. Don't make mistakes, won't take them on till the dawn rise, then it's over. Don't make mistakes, won't take them on Till the dawn rise, then it's over Now, for me personally, I am going to trash this one And the only reason I'm going to do that is because I know I'm not going to use it So it's a good tool, but like I do And I'm kind of already committed to using um, Oh yeah, it's called Fresh Air won't take them on till the dawn rise, then it's over. Don't make mistakes, won't take them on till the dawn rise, then it's Or I will use um, this one. And this is one we haven't done a keeper trash on, but uh, it is very effective. So. Won't take them on till the dawn rise, then it's over. Won't make mistakes, won't take them on till the dawn rise, then it's over. Won't make mistakes, won't take them. So, this is also not a bad plugin by any sense of the imagination, but if you have some of these other sort of like air band gen generators and you combine it with something like Soothe, or I think in Bitwig, there's even ways to kind of do a Soothe alternative, um, that's probably the way to go for me. But for you, this might be perfect. So, um, bottom line on this, vocal compressor is a keep for me, air shelf is going to be a trash. And it's not because it's not good it's just because i'm never going to use it so hopefully this was useful for you and, and you can determine if these are plugins that uh, you want to keep in your collection or not so thanks for watching and i hope everyone has a wonderful day take care